Tori, Bree, we just scouted another cookie. We did. You like we you got us another cookie. I just asked my lacrosse coach. That worked really well. It did. I said, hey, can I have a cookie? And she said, I mean, to be fair, they can have unlimited cookies. Yeah, it's Teacher Appreciation Day. So, to, like, they can have as many cookies as they want. So exactly. So they might as well appreciate us, the students, too, while they're at it. Yeah. Okay. Who do you think made these cookies? Betty Van Jack. Betty Van Jack. <laughs> yeah, Betty Van Jack. You just knew. You just knew. You were like Betty Van Jack. I bet she made these. I bet you she did because you know what? She did seven years of look who's cooking. Oh, yeah, and you can watch that, can't you? Yeah, where it's on the archives. Oh my gosh, that's. I want to watch that. I bet she's really good at cooking. I bet you she made these cookies seven years ago. Is that what they taste like to you? No. I was just saying. Seven-year-old cookies? Maybe. <laughs> like, they would have to mold. I feel like they want to be here. They would be really... I think they I would like decompose. They would decompose, yeah. But anyways, yeah. Betty Van Jack came back. Oh. That oh, kind of rhyme. <laughs> that we were on point there, guys. Her. Um, What was she doing? She was teaching us how to cook a turkey. Without actually unwrapping the turkey. Yeah. That's the most amazing thing I've ever heard in my entire life. It was pretty cool. Can we watch it? Yeah, let's go. Okay. I'm going to learn how to make a turkey. Without even opening it. Hi, I'm Dylan Ashcroft here with the lovely Betty Banjack to talk about a... Lovely? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> of course. A great Thanksgiving tradition, uh, the turkey and... It's everything meal-related, meal right? Well, we're going to look at uh, basically the turkey before the actual meal. Okay. So there's some tips, hopefully, what will be on TV before the, uh, actually Thanksgiving Day. And uh, after that, we can we'll, we'll do some other things connected with before time. Okay. One of the things I want to mention, when you're shopping for the holidays, you don't have to do it all in one day. Yeah. It's easier to break it down in two or three segments of what you need. So if you realize you really forgot something the first trip, you can pick it up the second or the third. And if storage is always a problem around Thanksgiving, make sure you clean your refrigerator out. Yeah. And make sure, like, you know, you don't need to store vinegar in the refrigerator, but you might find that in your refrigerator. And then after that, what you do, things like potatoes and oranges and apples and all, you can store in the uh, trunk of your car. Really? It's, it's cool. In the, I'm not, we're in the cold season now. You yeah. can't do that in July, maybe. But in the winter months, you can store that in the car. And that way you will have more room and like onions is good in there too and things like that. So I just wanted to talk about that beforehand, yeah. you know, the purchasing and then the, um, the actual um, getting ready and having everything there because it's always great to have everything on hand that, you know, when you're ready to start, whenever you start. Some people start the day before, okay. some the day after. One thing I want to mention, never stuff your bird the night before and put it in the refrigerator. How Gas is build up. Really? And the evidence can be very dangerous. That's what I'm told anyway. I never had that happen, so I don't know. Because I listened when they told me I can't <laughs> ever do that. And something I want to ask you, but do you know the difference between stuffing and filling? I do not. Basically, they're made with the same ingredients. Okay. But stuffing is what you put when you make the bird up, and you put it inside the bird, and you uh, roast it inside the bird. Filling is what you, uh, dressing, I mean, I said, okay. I said filling Stuffing and filling are the same. Okay. You put it inside the bird. Dressing is what you make in the casserole plane. You put it aside, and that makes the um, time. You don't have to roast it as long because it's not stuffed. What you need to do in that case, you would put something like herbs. Here we have some herbs and some citrus fruit. You can do an orange or a lemon, and you can just uh, cut it in half and put that in the cavity of the bird. Really? That's after you have to clean every... That, that's... I'm skipping ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, what we need to do when you start, we're we don't hear the lucky uh, turkey. This is a uh, fresh turkey. Uh, the real turkey got away from us today. It I ran away. <laughs> and uh, but you remove the the uh, plastic coating like this, and then you you wash it off and you and you dry it and you pat it dry. Make sure it's, it's you've gotten as much liquid off of it as you can. Then you take salt. And I have, this is um, kosher salt, but you can use regular salt, the salt okay. shaker or something, or something real special, sea salt from the Arabian seas yeah. or whatever. And you would salt the bird inside and out, and that also helps draw liquids out. Okay. Uh, when we go from there, I want to mention something. One of the best, best places to get all your information 
because I can give it to you. I think they're going to put up my email address if anyone wants to get in touch with me before Thanksgiving. If you have a question, I can answer. But the best bet is to go to the internet and go to 1-800-Butterball. Uh, they can answer anything you need to know. And one of the great things, they have a conversion sheet in there. Well, you put in, you're having eight adults and three kids, and they will tell you how much turkey you need, how much stuffing you need, how much vegetables you need, and it's really a neat thing. Um, That's actually pretty useful because uh, I know every year for my Thanksgiving, we, ra we rarely have enough turkey because we have a huge family. We all have a giant get-together, and we just barely run out of turkey. So every year, which I don't, I don't know why we never adjust it, but... I know, you never do. Yeah. Because then, the, then the year you seem to cut back. Where's the turkey sandwiches the next day? Well, we yeah, I mean... Yeah. Then everybody's in a frizzy because they don't have their turkey sandwiches. Cold sandwich. turkey, that's, cold gravy, it's so good. That's why I don't even want to give recipes and stuff because yeah. every family has their recipe or their tradition or their whatever they're doing, you know. And I, I don't want to interfere with that, but I do have a new one to show you. Okay. This is an easy thing. You take a bag of cranberries, like this, this is 12 ounces. This is a normal bag of, of cranberries. And these are big oranges, so I think you only need one. <laughs> but you would take the orange and you quarter it all, and you get as many seeds out as you can. Mm -hmm. And then you quarter it up and you put it in a food processor or a high quality blender. Okay. Until you grind it to the consistency you want. And that makes like a relish. Okay. And then you sweeten it either with sugar or artificial sweetener if that's what you want to use. But be careful, just start with a little, like with sugar, start with a quarter of a cup, because you can, with anything, you can always, always add mm -hmm. more sugar in the, but you can't take it out. Yeah, well, I mean, it disintegrates yeah, Well, that can be bad with hot, you know, spicy hot foods, you get too hot. Yeah. yeah. And I'm bad with spicy <laughs> hot foods. Everybody knows that they used to watch uh, this is cooking, which I did from this school. Which, if you want to watch any of that, you can go into the archives on our YouTube channel and watch a ton of those. I know we post them all the time, so. It was quite, it was seven years, I think. Really? Without a kitchen. We did this, <laughs> this table and an oven and a few items that we drag in every week became our kitchen. That's so cool. it was a long time coming. But then, then you grind it and then you put the sugar in there and you see how they, and it makes it different. It's not a cranberry sauce, it's not a cranberry jelly, it's just a, a relish type consistency. So I have a question. So uh, with the orange, right? Yeah. Uh, do you put the peel, like what do you yeah, do with you, the peels? Yeah, you, you would put the you peels? use the food processor, you got to pul pulverize it. Okay. Like you would the cranberry. If you really don't want to put, you can do whatever you want, but I found the consistency much better when you put the, um, Rinds in. Okay, so now this has a lot. I don't know if I would put it all, and I would have to check it out and see how it yeah. looks and stuff. So it'd be able to make it a little bit thicker in yeah, tasting. Yeah, that would make it thicker. The okay. more of the skin you'd put in, the thicker it would get. I kind of like this very thick, and I like it very relishy, more than saucy. Yeah. So I I could have cram. You know, a great cranberry recipe day after. Yeah, lots of cranberry sauce mm -hmm. left over. Take Cool Whip. Take a tub of Cool Whip, and put some cranberry. Uh, cranberry sauce on it and swirl it through the cool whip. Really? Put it in the freezer. How come the freezer? Like well, freezes up like sort of an ice cream or an ice. Oh, so you could serve it as an ice. Wow, I was thinking and like it's just a nice treat and it's a nice way to get rid of your. Uh, you get rid of the turkey ultimately, but you, you get the yeah. cranberry sauce seems to stick around for much. You always longer. get the sides that stick around for a little while, like the uh, the mashed potatoes that kind of just sit there for a little bit, a little bit. Why well, we I. I um, I love cranberry sauce on turkey sandwiches instead of mayonnaise or mustard or anything. I haven't tried that. Uh, I might have to do that this year. You know, instead of the yeah. thing. I happen to like mustard on my turkey sandwiches, which is unheard of. I have big fights about that, but I, that's how I like it, so that's how to I To be honest it. with you, I'm the only one in my family who actually puts mustard on it. Oh, me oh, too? Yeah, yeah, I, I love, love it. it. Everyone looks at me and is like, why are you doing that? I mean, mustard, mustard does not, not deserve uh, to, to be. be. One, One Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving evening, evening, I went make a turkey sandwiches because we didn't have any, we didn't have any mayonnaise. Really? I, no, nobody else would eat it because we didn't have mayonnaise. And I could, but there's mustard, and nobody. And nobody would touch it. Yeah. yeah. Something I want to mention too, you know, getting ready for the day, and all, especially if you have children and big children. Yeah, you know, I mean big, I mean big kids. Children, oh yeah, you know. You know. I mean? People that there's a lot of things you can give them and you can have them do. And one of them is really easy. I was showing earlier again. If you go on the internet, there's the thousand things you can think of and do. If you take your hand and make sure that it's, in, it's almost like a turkey. 
I, I drew it here, but I don't know if you can see it because it's too light. And what, then you get uh, your crayons out. Mm -hmm. I'm big at crowning. Even before the new fad came out, now you never miss crayon. You take your crayons and then you color each thing. You just get to color it in, you get to personalize it. Whatever, you can do it all the same, same color, color if you want. Now, now if you, you get, get a kid, kid with a small hand, hand yeah. Yeah. And, and you trace, trace it, it, you can, can make, make, it, make them make the name cards. Really? Right. You know, you, you do, do this and you, you, know, you put, put uh, John. On it, and then that, that would be the, the name, name card. card. But, but you, you have, have to have, have a small hand. I mean, yeah. You don't, you don't want, want a name. name card that big. You cut it out, too. This thing. I think like you can cut it out and like maybe hang it on like the, the yeah, banister. And another thing you can do with that is if you take the word Thanksgiving or prayer or peace or whatever, you can make, I'm doing this really quick and freehanded. You know like, like a pen in it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you could like make the little pedants and the pedants and like hang them around the, the, yeah, the living can, room. This is a little, and put, put a different T H F out things together. Oh, okay. And connect them together. You can hang it up on the wall like that, or you can write peace or joy, whatever you want to put on a thing, or turkey, or something. See, I was thinking like people busy. Yeah. See, I was thinking when you were explaining that, like you just write Thanksgiving on each one. Uh, but you took it a step further. I like that. You can have it spell it out. You really get them involved in designing yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah, they, and then they can help each other. I always believe children should be involved in cook, cooking. I don't mean a two-year-old. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, I brought this with me. Do you know what this is? Is that a spoon? This is well, a paddle spoon. spoon. See, see the, the hole, hole in the middle? I do see <laughs> the hole. This, this is specially made, made for a pudding. pudding. Okay. How come? Okay. But, but it is. It gives another, another surface. surface to smoothing out the pudding or the sauce, and it just makes it easier. You know, today we have all the modern appliances. Yeah. One time they didn't have them. By the way, did you know there was no pie at the first Thanksgiving dinner? Really? What was there? I, I can't, like, imagine Thanksgiving without a, a pumpkin well, nobody pie. Nobody can, I don't think. I think you take a pie even before the turkey. Yeah. The reason behind it being the pilgrims, when they first came over, they were called uh, saints, by the way. Okay. They went, Pilgrim became their name later on when during a marketing campaign for Thanksgiving. I think. But the saints remembered to bring alcohol and whiskey with, with them, them to the, the New World, world but, they but they forgot, forgot to bring seeds, seeds and planting. Really? So there was, there was no, no flour to plant. The only flour they had would be the corn flour from the Indians, and corn flour doesn't make great pie uh, crushes. They had pumpkins and squash and all, like baked with puddings and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but, but they, they didn't, didn't have the. Uh, the stuff to make the crust. With. If they had any flour, they didn't waste it on pie crusts. Yeah, pumpkin pumpkin pudding would actually. You know that sounds pretty good. I might have to try that. It's corn pudding's good too. Corn pudding? I haven't had that. And then there's a the persimmon pudding. What's that? Persimmons are those little orange. Persimmons. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they're, they look like little oranges or something, but it's just almost like a, a nectarine consistency, oh, okay. and they're orange and all. And they can be very bitter, but if, once you put sugar, they're they're really good. So the thing is, um, I don't know, did we cover almost everything we need to cover? Do we have more time? Do we need more? Uh, I believe we're good, we're actually. Good? Yeah. Oh, oh, I did mention the oven bags. They're really, they do help you clean up a lot. I'm oh, yeah. Tell you. And our friend here, the turkey, I guess he's going to be, this is the fresh turkey. And it doesn't matter whether you use a fresh or a, a frozen turkey, by the way. Okay. Actually, fresh. Frozen, frozen turkeys, turkeys are better, better than, than fresh turkeys because, because till the, the fresh, fresh turkey, turkey gets here, it's a couple of weeks till it gets in the market. The a fresh turkey is frozen immediately. Really? And then and they, they transport it frozen. Okay. So, so it's almost a lot fresh. I spoke to a nutritionist on a radio show one time, and she thought that frozen vegetables in general were fresher and better than uh, fresh ones That's because normal fresh they one. capture uh, this essence at the height. Okay. All right, well, I think that's about as time as we have. If you'd like to see more of Miss Banjack, you can go onto NESD archives and watch more of Look Who's Cooking. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. And a reminder, if you have any questions, you can email me. I think they're going to put up my email address. And but your best bet is to contact 1-800-BUTTERBALL. And they can, they have like Butterball Central, I'm told. They have panels and stuff and big... Uh, 
billboards and all the information in front of them, and they can just tell you everything. And they're very, very good. I think the people that they hire for that position are especially trained to okay. do that. So I want to wish you a good Thanksgiving. And you too. And everyone have a good, good Thanksgiving and a good turkey. And don't eat too much. Boy, that's a joke, <laughs> isn't it, to say that? Yeah, I mean, I always put on a couple pounds. But uh, anyways, I'm Dylan Ashcraft, talking with lovely Miss Betty Banjack about Thanksgiving. That lovely again. Yeah, hey. Yeah. Now back to the eagle's eye. <laughs>